Fotheringhay Castle today may just look like a mound of earth, or a hill surrounded by a ditch and a fence, but its story is linked closely to some of the most significant events of the medieval and Tudor period. The only stonework that remains of the castle is part of the wall surrounded by a metal fence, but it's an incredible place to visit. Hidden behind a farm, it's the place where the most shocking execution of the reign of Elizabeth I took place, and it's also a place where Richard III, one of the most notorious kings of England, was born. So join us today as we look at Fotheringhay Castle, and remember to support our channel, please make sure to subscribe. A castle was created at Fotheringhay following the Norman conquest around the year 1100. It sits next to the River Nen and was owned at one point by David the King of Scotland. The castle passed through Scottish princes and during the medieval period it saw a lot of action. It was taken during the Second Baron's War and successive kings of England granted the castle to many different princes. It's a castle that's linked mostly to the House of York and today these links can still be seen inside of the local church and there is much iconography devoted to the Yorkist dynasty. Interestingly much of the stonework for the church came from the castle. Fotheringhay Castle was a favourite residence for Richard the Duke of York who was married to Cecily Neville. They are an influential family and together the couple fathered two sons who would go on to become the future kings of England, Edward IV and Richard III. Richard III was actually born inside of Fotheringhay Castle in 1452 and he went on to become one of the most iconic and notorious English kings. Richard has been portrayed in Shakespeare as the ultimate villain, mostly due to his suspected involvement in the deaths of his nephews, the princes in the tower, whom he was supposed to be protecting. Following this, Richard then seized the throne for himself, deposing the young to be Edward V before he even had time to be crowned. It was assumed that Edward was murdered along with his brother on the orders of Richard, but Richard's reign ultimately came to an end two years later following his death at the Battle of Bosworth Field during the Wars of the Roses. He was slain on the battlefield allegedly close to Henry Tudor, but his whole life began inside of the confines of Fotheringhay Castle, which today doesn't stand. The most historically significant event that took place at Fotheringhay was the execution of Mary Queen of Scots. Mary had been imprisoned for 18 years after fleeing Scotland and Elizabeth I kept a close eye on her. However she began to become implicated in a number of different plots and one of these was the Babington plot. This saw Anthony Babington along with other conspirators communicate with Mary via coded messages and it was planned to break the Scottish Queen out of prison and assassinate Elizabeth. She became embroiled in the Catholic plot to place her on the throne of England after the planned murder of Elizabeth. However, after Francis Walsingham's spy network uncovered the full scope of the plan, Mary Queen of Scots was placed on trial and was convicted of treason. Fotheringhay Castle at this time was used as a state prison and her trial took place inside the Great Hall on the 5th of October 1586. The Great Hall today would have been found at the bottom of the bailey the mound of earth that stands held the keep, but there were separate buildings below the keep such as the great hall, the chapel and also lodgings. This area also contained the kitchens and bakehouse as well as other gatehouses, but nothing today stands and it is only the grass piece of land you can see today. But it was inside here where Mary's execution took place. It was said that on February 7th 1587 the representatives of the English Queen reached the castle of Fotheringhay where the Queen of Scotland was confined at the time between 2 and 3 in the morning, between 2 and 3 in the afternoon. They read their commission regarding the execution of the prisoner and said that they would proceed with their tasks the next morning between 7 and 8 o'clock. The jailer was ordered to have everything ready. Mary inside the castle begged for more time to arrange her affairs but she was told she must die and to be ready for the specific time in the morning saying her execution could not be delayed. Inside Fotheringhay, Mary then spent the rest of the day in the early hours writing goodbye letters to her friends and family and saying goodbye to her ladies in waiting and she also spent much time in prayer. The scaffold had been created in the middle of a large room assumed to have been the Great Hall and it measured 12 feet along and 2 feet in height and was covered by linen cloth. Upon her execution time, Mary entered the room full of grace 
as if she was attending a ball rather than her own death. She asked for help onto the scaffold, and once there, she rejected the Protestant minister she had been provided with, and asked her ladies to help her remove her headdress. The executioner asked for her forgiveness, and Mary gave this which was customary, and she was then prepared for her death. She said goodbye to her ladies one final time, and then a handkerchief was placed over her eyes. She laid her head on the block, and the execution was then performed very poorly. Mary Queen of Scots's head was not taken off in one clean strike. The first strike embedded the axe into her neck, but it did not sever her head from her body. The next strike did not do this either, and in fact the executioner used his axe like a saw following the two strikes. After this the executioner picked up her head, declared God save Queen Elizabeth, however Mary was wearing a wig and her head then fell onto the floor. All of her possessions were then burned to prevent relics being taken of the Catholic Queen. The castle was clearly an important site and must have been seen as a valuable prison to hold such prize assets such as Mary, however within 50 years of her execution it was in a ruined state. Today hardly anything exists of Fotheringhay Castle apart from the earthworks and a small amount of masonry that remains. But this would have been one of the highest fought off fortifications across medieval and Tudor England, as it was deemed a place to house the most valuable prisoner of Elizabeth I's reign. It was a Motton Bailey castle, flanked by the River Nen, that also added some defence. It was a mighty castle, but today it's incredibly sad that nothing stands except the earthworks. It would have been a brilliant place to visit, and it's a place that holds such a rich history, and it was a setting of one of Tudor England's most shocking executions. Once again thanks for watching, to support our channel please make sure to subscribe and once again thank you so much for watching.